Am I the idiot for wanting to break up with my controlling boyfriend despite his threats of self-harm? My boyfriend has been mentally exhausting from the beginning, and we got together in high school after I was pressured to date him. He has had really low self-esteem and constantly vies for my validation, but I have been able to semi-reassure him. I was fine with that until it started manifesting in him being controlling and almost like a guard dog to me, standing behind me scowling when I would talk to other people. Recently, we both entered college and I was hanging out with someone I became friends with at orientation. He freaked out and cried in the car at me because he was jealous and didn't like the person for, as he said, no particular reason. Mostly, he has had issues with me hanging out with people outside of our small group of friends because he doesn't want people to take advantage of me or hit on me. This really rubbed me the wrong way. Then semi-recently I was talking about getting Scottish citizenship because it seems a lot safer. I'm a queer and trans person in America and I have family over there. And he yet again freaked out because he didn't want to live a life without me and was afraid to lose me. Then I freaked out because I'm afraid of being trapped and we're still really young. For context, my mom was trapped with my hurtful father for a long time and it really messed me up and made me sort of non-committal, not in an infidelity way at all, but more so being afraid of not having an out or having independence, not being able to make decisions for myself. I also recently learned that he didn't like one of my ex-friends before my boyfriend and I got together, not because he was a bad person, but because I was closer with him than I was with my boyfriend at the time. I didn't really know him. Another thing is that we're both trans, female to male, and I've been out for five years, medically transitioning for a little over two years. This wouldn't be an issue if my boyfriend were out to his family. He came out to his mom, and she was neutral. He really wants testosterone and top surgery but refuses to come out to any more of his family. Every time we talk, he ends up complaining about being dead-named and misgendered, but then takes no agency to avoid being dead-named and misgendered. I told him flat out that I can't keep having this same conversation because it's draining on my mental health, but he keeps having it. Furthermore, his anger issues have worsened and he emits this constant aura of anger. I can't deal with this. I also have complex post-traumatic stress disorder from being emotionally abused as a child, so this is very triggering. It's also difficult because he can be really sweet and funny, but the cons have just been building up for a long time, and I've been gradually distancing myself because I get stressed being around him, but it makes me feel really awful. I'm scared to break up with him because when I told him I can't deal with his strong emotions all the time, he said he was suicidal, also triggering because my dad would do the same thing. I want to stay friends because I don't want to lose my other friends. I was friends with them first, and some of them have said they would harm themselves if we broke up, but I think they're joking, and I don't know what to do. Help. To add, my friends have said that they would harm themselves if we broke up. But my boyfriend did bring up unalived when I was talking about how I don't know if I can stay together. I'm not sure if it makes any difference though. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Okay, this man needs a psychological intervention. Anyone, and I mean anyone, threatening unalived is extremely emotionally unstable. If he's instilling this much control over what you can and can't do, then the relationship isn't about love for him. It's a toxic obsession, and that is dangerous for both of you. Call a hotline if you're going to break up with him, but you need to get out of there. Comment 2. Break up, and when he says he's going to harm himself, call the police. Call the police. They will either get him the help he needs for being suicidal, or he will have to explain a very awkward situation. Either way, your conscience is clear. Move on and live your best life. Now for the update. A couple of days after the last incident, I decided to meet with my friend Jamie at the local library to talk things through. Honestly, I needed to get my head straight and figure out what the heck was going on with my boyfriend. Like, I was so done with the drama and just wanted to have a normal life for once. Jamie was always there for me, so I figured talking it out over some stale library coffee was my best bet. 
So we met up and I started spilling all the tea, from the crazy outburst to the whole Scottish citizenship thing that had my boyfriend really upset. Jamie said she couldn't believe how messed up things were with us and suggested I reach out to my boyfriend to clear the air and see how he was doing. I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. What if he flipped out again? But I knew I couldn't keep avoiding him, so I texted him to ask if we could meet, and he agreed to come over to my apartment later that evening. The day went by super fast. I cleaned up my place and tried to prepare for whatever was about to happen. When my boyfriend showed up, he looked a bit disheveled, wearing a hoodie that seemed to swallow him. I guess he was feeling insecure or something because he was definitely not looking like his usual self. We sat on the couch and I could tell he was nervous. He kept fidgeting with the sleeves of his hoodie like he was trying to disappear into it or something. It was kind of sad, honestly. We talked and he brought up my interest in Scottish citizenship again, this time sounding more desperate than before. He asked if I was planning to leave him for good and I assured him that wasn't the case. I mean, I didn't really know what I wanted, but I wasn't about to bail on him just like that. We ended our talk with a somewhat awkward hug. I couldn't help but feel like things were still super messed up between us. The next day, I got a text from my mom inviting me to a family dinner at her place. I hesitated but decided it might be a good distraction, so I asked my boyfriend if he wanted to come. He agreed, but I could see his anxiety creeping back as we approached my parents' house. I could just feel the tension in the air. At dinner, my dad made jokes about my brother's baby on the way, which made my boyfriend visibly tense. My sister brought up her recent engagement, which led to my boyfriend becoming more withdrawn. Honestly, it was like he was fading away right in front of us. Halfway through the meal, my boyfriend suddenly stood up and announced he needed to go outside for fresh air. I followed him outside and found him pacing on the porch, muttering to himself. He turned to me, looking panicked, and said he felt like he was losing control. I tried to calm him down, but he got angry, yelling that I didn't understand what he was going through. I stepped back, shocked by the outburst in front of my family. It was so embarrassing, like I just wanted to disappear. My mom appeared at the door, concerned, and asked if everything was okay. My boyfriend quickly claimed he was just feeling overwhelmed. We went back inside, and my boyfriend sat in silence, avoiding eye contact with anyone. The whole dinner was super awkward after that. After dinner, as we were leaving, my brother pulled me aside and asked if everything was alright between me and my boyfriend. I brushed it off, telling him we were just going through some stuff. I could see the worry in his eyes, but I didn't want to get into it. Later that night, I got a message from my boyfriend saying he needed space to figure things out. I wasn't sure how to feel about that. The next day, I was surprised to find out from Jamie that my boyfriend had been seen at a local cafe with someone else. I couldn't believe it. I confronted him about the cafe sighting, and he denied it at first. After some back and forth, he admitted he went there to talk with another friend, but insisted nothing was happening. He suggested we take a break, saying he needed to focus on himself and his transition. I agreed to the break, but made it clear that I needed to discuss things further before making any final decisions. A week later, I met with my parents for lunch, and they brought up my boyfriend's behavior. They were worried, and honestly, so was I. I confronted my boyfriend about the break and my decision to separate. He reacted angrily, threatening to harm himself, which triggered my past trauma. I couldn't handle that. I immediately called a trusted relative to come over and support me. My relative arrived quickly and I shared everything that had happened. Together, we worked on a plan to make sure my boyfriend would get the help he needed. I ended the conversation with my boyfriend on a firm note. I just didn't know what else to do. Edit. After the last message, my boyfriend's cousin reached out to me, expressing concern for his well-being. We agreed to do a wellness check and thankfully, he was okay. We also arranged for a mental health professional to speak with him. He still wants a break, but we're working on setting boundaries.